In this video, I'm going to break down for you the strategy that I use to crush my interviews on up. My biggest secret is that I never jump right into the interview during the client interview process. Whenever the client wants to start the interview, I always take a step back and say, how's your day? Where are you from? What kind of industry are you in? I always ask a lot of questions. And the reason why that is, is that I try to make myself stand out right from the beginning. The client has probably been interviewing multiple people already throughout the day and throughout the week. So rather than being interview number 200 or 50 or 10 or whatever it may be, I try to change things up a little bit. I talk about their background, ask them where they're from, anything to break the conversation. And then in their mind instantly, they think to themselves that this person is a little bit different. Once I've established a bit of rapport and trust with them, then I gradually segue into the topic at hand, which is the interview for the job itself. And whenever the client asks over here and says, how should we start the interview process? Should they speak first or should I ask a few questions first? I always say, let me ask the questions first. And the reason why this is very important is that by me asking the questions, I get more of an opportunity to listen to the client speak. And when the client is speaking, this gives me an opportunity to pick up on the main points, understand what their needs are, and to really get the client to open up about themselves. At the end of the day, the client wants to express all their frustrations, their pain points and everything. But if you never give them the opportunity to do this, then you'll never find out. So that's why it's important. Always start off the interview by asking a lot of questions. During the question part, one point that I always try to highlight is by asking them, do they have any current pain points? And this is very important. The client may talk for 10 or 15 minutes talking about various aspects of the business and what they're looking for. But then when you get right to it and you find out their specific pain points, you can then cut out the fluff from their actual needs. And this is very important for you to decide how best to tackle it, how best to give your proposal in terms of the price, budget, and the timeline of the actual project itself. And during the question process itself, I also try to find out who I'm going to be working with. Am I going to be working with the owner? Am I going to be working with someone from the sales team, the accounting department? It's really important because that is the person that I'm going to be dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. So the person hiring you could be the VP, it could be a director, it could be someone who's completely out of the picture, or it could be someone from HR who you don't even talk to. So that's why it's very important to see, okay, who is the person you're going to be working with because that determines your relationship and that determines for you the type of personality that you're going to be dealing with. So it's very important to find out. And I've had this situation in the past many times where the person that hired me at Upwork was completely different from the person that I work with and vice versa. A specific question related to my industry that I try to find out is that do they need me to build the structure or also implement afterward as well? And what do I mean by this? When someone is hiring you just to build a structure, that means that afterward, the team's going to come in, whether it's the sales, marketing, whatever department may be, or going to then execute that project. Or is it going to be who's going to build the structure and also execute the project as well because those are two different complete skills and it's very important to be clear right from the beginning. I know the topic of money is always a very sensitive conversation so that's why I keep it near the end but it's very important to ask if they're working with the budget and you don't have to get specific in terms of dollars and cents but in general it's good to understand a framework but in general it's good to understand a framework. The reason why that is is that before you actually pitch your price and your budget and your proposal you get a better understanding of if you're very far apart or it's a budget that you can work with. And once I've asked them about the price and confirmed what they have in mind, I also ask an additional question by finding out if this is going to be a project which is going to be a one-off project or it's something that they want to have a long-term relationship. Because if it's a one-off project, I might make my prices a bit higher because I know it's only going to be a one project and I'm not going to see them again. Whereas if you're looking for a long-term project, I may be a bit more flexible in my price knowing the fact that it's going to be a recurring revenue that I'm going to have with them for a period of weeks, months, or even years. Lastly, when I conclude the interview with the client, I usually conclude by saying a few statements. I first tell them that I'm going to take everything that they mentioned and put it into a proposal. And then what I'm going to do is build a timeline. So it could be a, a one month timeline or three month timeline based on the project scope itself. And then also give a budget as well. I try to avoid giving any sort of specific until after the call. And the reason why that is, is that by taking the time to build a proposal and a budget and a timeline, it shows that I'm willing to go a step beyond everyone else by taking the time and putting the thought into it. The next thing that I do is I ask them, is there anything in the conversation that they had any confusion about, any comments, concerns, questions, or any feedback in general? What that allows me to do is that in case there's something that they had on their mind, or maybe something I didn't communicate correctly, I can address that over there, as opposed to them taking that back with them. And then maybe afterwards in their mind, they get confused and hire someone else afterwards based on a misunderstanding. So that allowed me the opportunity to correct anything else that was mentioned that needs to be addressed. 
Lastly, what I do when I wrap up the conversation is that I outline a step of action item from over here and I tell them that you'll get the timeline proposal by this date and then I'll follow up with them on this date if I haven't heard from them and the next step onwards from there. What this does for them, it makes them feel comforted by the fact that someone is taking ownership and then laying out the next step for them as well. As opposed to them chasing after you and asking if you're interested, you flip the script on them and put everything on yourself and say that, look, this is the action item. This is how we're going to proceed. And then right from over here, we're going to start. The client is already going to feel like they're already walking with you and the project has already started with you. These are the steps that I use to crush my interviews on Upwork. Again, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I make a lot of mistakes and I'm still learning every single day. However, if you develop a strategy and use some of the points that are mentioned over here, I can promise you that the number of interviews that you get and you close on them will gradually increase when you have a systematic process in place as opposed to winging it every single time.